Mio. <sighs> what? Make a video. No. Do it. No. Why not? Because. Uh, shut up. Come on, just make a video. I can't. Besides, I don't have any ideas for a video anyway. Well, if you don't make a new video before I finish editing the ending of my current review, you can't come to Palladium with us in Anime North. What? No, no, don't do anything like that, please. I, I want to go to Palladium, please. I want to go. So, what's it gonna be? <sighs> okay, I'll do a video. Just go back to your dumb review or whatever. That's what I thought. <sighs> Stupid Zero. Always make me want to do a video. It's not like he credited me at the ending of KTAS 10 anyways. Wait a minute. Ending. Endings. Hmm. I got it! Endings! When it comes to stories, they always have to come to an end at some point in time. This still holds true in video games, unless said video game is multiplayer only or has no story at all. But I digress. The impact of a story in a video game can either engage people in the game more, or turn them off completely from it, especially when it comes to a game's ending. I mean seriously, look what Mass Effect 3's ending did to gamers. But anyways, if a game's ending makes someone feel accomplished for finishing the game, making someone emotional, or just feeling like their time was well spent, then that's the sign of a good ending. However, there are endings out there that end up being confusing, lazy, make the player feel like they wasted their time, and just makes people go, WHY? So for this list, I'm going to be counting down both types of these endings for the games that were released in 2011. Now, before I begin, I'm going to have to set up some ground rules. Number one, the quality and or reception of a game does not matter. We're talking about a game's ending here, not the entire game as a whole. If I wanted to cover a whole game, then I would be doing a review instead. And you know how good I am at doing a review in a timely manner. <laughs> no. Number two, games I have played and beaten are the only ones that are making it on this list. I wanted to base this list off a of personal experience with the game, because spoiling games without playing them first kinda ruins the fun of doing a list like this. So for reference, you won't see games like Deus Ex Human Revolution on this list, as I still have not beaten the game yet. Sorry folks. And number three, spoilers, naturally. So if you see a game on this list that you don't want to see spoiled, stop watching the video right now because this will be your only warning. If you don't give two fucks about having a game spoiled, then keep on watching like normal. Everyone got that? Good. Now that all that stuff's out of the way, let's start this off by counting down the top five worst video game endings of 2011. Number five. Conduit 2. Yeah, you know, Conduit 2, that Wii FPS that was a sequel to the other Wii FPS, The Conduit. Also, the one Wii game that decided to come out on the same exact day as these fucking games. But in all honesty, I felt that this was an overlooked game because it is a fun Wii shooter. I'd put it up there with GoldenEye Wii or, hell, even the first Conduit or the Metro Prime games if you count those as shooters on the Wii. Hell, he even has the voice of Duke Nukem doing the main character's voice in this game. What? That's what I said when I played it, but I'm not complaining. They'll give him something to sign a Kineticon this year. God bless you. Anyways, throughout the game, you're just getting the spirits from dead progenitors, and by the end of the game, you have to fight Adam, who is a progenitor himself, and of course, in true video game fashion, you beat him and you get his spirit. After getting all the progenitor spirits, however, a signal is sent up from the ASC up into outer space. Then... Then this happens. What the? You're here to help. Wait, what? Alien Space Marine Presidents? Really? I mean, really? Is that what we're going with now? Okay, the first game, we had, like, conspiracies and crap, and then aliens, I can take that, but fucking alien U.S. presidents, really? I don't, I don't think I can comprehend the stupidity of this, like, it even sets up for the third game, which I don't even know is gonna come out now, but... WHAT?! U.S. presidents as space marines?! Really?! I, I, don't, I don't fucking know anymore, I, I just, I just don't know anymore. 
Now, while I think this ending is really stupid, at the same time, part of me kind of likes the absurdity of it, which is kind of why it's very low in this list. I mean, I still think it's dumb, but it's not as bad as any of the other endings I put on this list, so that's why I'm only keeping it at number 5. Conduit 2. Why the fuck are US presidents aliens now? Number 4. Battlefield 3. Oh, but wait a minute, I thought Battlefield 3 was a multiplayer focused game. Well, yeah, it is. But then again, DICE added a single player with a story, so yes, this counts. If you want a whole idea of what the whole point of the single player is, well, it's basically this. Where the video games? Except replace video games with nukes. Now, at the end of the game, you and one of your buddy soldiers that survived the whole game because it was being told through flashback, you break out of the interrogation room and have to take down the guy named Solomon who are handling the nukes. Except I'm just gonna call him Daniel Craig here because we're looking at him. He kinda looks like Daniel Craig to me. Anyways, you track him down through Train, which was the first level in the game, and they repeat it here because flashbacks and all that crap. And then after some sort of car chase and crap, you crash in the middle of Times Square, I believe, and all you do to win is a quick time event. That's it. You fight Daniel Craig in its quick time event and win by bashing his face in with a brick you randomly find by the tire. And there you go. Find the nukes. That's it. Oh, it doesn't end there. The ending monologue with Dimitri, who is this Russian you got to play as in a couple of levels, just talks about war and whatever. There's really nothing to this ending. It's just there. Like, after being the single player, you feel like, oh, well, I beat single player. There's nothing fulfilling about it. Then again, you realize that Battlefield was a game that was focused on multiplayer. So you just say, fuck this, and go play multiplayer instead and have all the fun you want. So in point, there really is no point to the single player if you're being as generic as this. Battlefield 3. Kinda makes you wish Bad Company would make a comeback someday. Number 3. Resistance 3. Now, honestly, I love this game. It basically brings back all the good things from Resistance 1 that the second game took away. And that's great, I love that! And hell, single player was fun to play through. For most of the part. However, by the time I got to the game's ending, it just... It didn't feel accomplishing for me for some reason. Now by the end of the game, you end up in New York and you're basically tasked to destroying this huge ass chimera base. And basically, you destroy it in a similar fashion to the final boss of the first game. Well, quote unquote boss. In the first game, you had to destroy a bunch of glowing rods, and you win. In this game, you blow up a bunch of glowing rods and win. Which honestly, I find that a pretty funny callback if you ask me. However, after you just do an admittedly cool escape from the building, even though it's sort of scripted, I don't even think you could die here, it just ends, like the war just ends, the Chimera are apparently done for and you're just reunited with your wife and kid. That's it. I mean, yeah, you're reunited with your wife and kid, that's nice, I, 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 I can take that. But really, the war ending like that? It just feels a bit too instant, like, there, I don't see much victory from this or anything, like no cheering, no nothing. It just felt like, well, war's over, back to normal life. It just didn't feel fulfilling for me. Resistance 3. Good job at bringing the great gameplay back, but you could have ended the game a hell of a lot better, Insomniac. Number 2. Killzone 3. Yet another shooter I enjoyed playing in 2011. Also, you notice that there's a lot of shooters on this list, and I mean, what the fuck is up with that? Well, anyway, I, in a way, enjoyed the third game's gameplay better than Killzone 2, even though I loved Killzone 2's gameplay. The story, I felt, took a big step down from the second game, and this holds true in this game's ending. Long story short, Stahl is planning to attack Earth, Stahl kills Orlok because, you know, rivalries and shit. Sev, Rico, and the others end up stopping him, and in the process, blow up Helgen with the Petrocyte inside of the cruiser. Yes, Helgen blows up, and that's it. It practically ends after Helgen blows up. Now, it doesn't explode, it just gets 
petrocited all across the globe, basically killing everything. So, yeah, after that, the game basically ends, but what's this after credits? And of course, we find out that somehow Stahl survives the crash, and somehow two Helgen soldiers are still alive. Okay, honestly, how are you gonna follow up with that? I mean, Helgen blew up, and you don't give any resolution. I mean, I'm presuming you're just gonna make a fourth game, adding more stuff, but after this, how the fuck can you follow up a planet dying? I don't know, it just felt abrupt, lazy, and in a way shoehorned in a fourth game. Killzone 3. Somehow blowing up the enemy planet doesn't end the fucking game series. And my pick for the worst video game ending of 2011 goes to... Rage. Now, despite this game getting quite a bit of flack from gamers, I really enjoyed it. I loved the open world, and I thought the gameplay and shooting mechanics were really solid. The thing is, though, the ending is possibly one of the worst I've seen in 2011. Now, basically, you just go through the game, you do your quests and normal shit, and the more you progress through the story, the more the world opens up. It gets more interesting, and it gets exciting a little bit at points. And by the time you have to raid the Authority building, that's when things take a turn for the worse. Now, when you're normally playing, you would think this is near the end of the game, and you'd be right. I mean, you're given a huge fucking laser Gatling gun that destroys everything, has a BFG secondary fire, and just allows you to tear shit up in the final level. Which is kind of nice, but also destroys part of the weapon strategy in Rage. But then again, a little break from the monotony, so why not? Just tear shit up. And with stuff like this, you'd be expecting this boss at the end of the fight, just to make it worth your while. Mainly because throughout Rage, there have been boss battles before, so you're expecting one. So you make your way through the Authority building, and you get to this big room, this is where the boss is gonna be. But instead, there's monster closets, and you just have to activate buttons while you have to wait for the next one to activate. You know, this could be like the final gauntlet before the final boss, then it gets good. Then you press the button, and... What? That's it? No boss? Nothing? Just just ends? Nothing? The arcs just get unearthed? That's it? Nothing else? You just What? What? That's it? No, 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 that's not an ending, that's a, that's a fucking cop out. Yep, that's the ending to Rage. Absolutely nothing. This ending alone can almost ruin the entire game for me because it just ends, there's nothing. It's just lazy, it's like they're gonna shoehorn in DLC or the sequel, that's it. No other ending I've experienced in 2011 was as lazy as Rage's, which is why it's my pick for the worst ending of 2011. So, those were my picks for the worst endings of 2011, but we're not done yet. 